Hey y'all, it's Amanda with Tap Mom and the Big Brigade. I'm just gonna, um, <laughs> I know I said in the general chat I wasn't gonna do this tutorial, but I've done it. So, um, <laughs> it's rough. It, hopefully some of y'all will enjoy it. Um, I had a, I had a little fight with myself about it, but I've done it. I've recorded it. I just got to put it together now. But I wanted to um, record this uh, epilogue to my intro um, so that y'all knew what you were in for. But um, this, is, this is what this tutorial is. This is what, um, what I've recorded a tutorial to help you make um, using this here loom to make this here hat. So hopefully y'all enjoy it uh i've had enough of a uh, request for for um for um a tutorial uh for a loom knitted to you know situation so i've made a lot of these and y'all have seen it y'all have seen these um hats uh that i've been putting with my sweaters i've been um doing hats to match the sweaters that i've been selling and so um uh, i figured i would go ahead and um you know Do the tutorial that people have been asking me to do. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoy it. Um, y'all just let me know in the comments uh, what y'all think about it. And uh, I will try to find a um, a set of looms from Amazon and link it in the description for you. Just in case you don't have any. Uh, I, I did use a um, 41 peg loom in this tutorial. Uh, and um, I'll try to find y'all one from Amazon. Um, so that y'all can get one if you don't already have one. Okay, enjoy. Hey y'all, it's Amanda with Tap Mom and the Bag Brigade. Hope everybody's having a good Wednesday. Uh, we are okay here. It, the weather warmed up finally, and I was able to get out and go pick up a yarn order from Joanne's. <laughs> Shocker, right? Anyway, um, I went and got some hue and me yarn and three different colors let's see here if I can get get them up here I got th these three colors I got two of each of these three colors and um, and this is line this is from line brand it's two wand two of wands hue and me chunky wool blend it's 80% acrylic and 20% wool it's 4.4 ounces uh, 125 grams 137 yards 125 meters uh five weight yarn recommends a uh 6.5 millimeter knitting needle and 6.5 millimeter crochet hook machine washable and dryable uh this color is called desert it's a nice neutral color uh this color is called oh let me find it again sea glass sea glass and this is called juniper it's a nice green and so i got two each of these colors um i also got th two more of the three uh browns i got in uh the skin tones oh a week or so ago uh just so that i'd have enough for that project uh because it was still on sale and it was a steal of a deal <laughs> as our lovely one would say um anyway um i have been asking ask about a tutorial for um a lunet hat i'm going to try this i don't know how good i'll be at, at it um i know i mentioned it in the in the chat room in our facebook chat um i don't know uh, because I tried to do it on the table. Uh, I cleaned off my little table that sits in front of me that I pile all my stuff on and It didn't work out because I don't have the right camera set up. I couldn't stay in frame uh, Because my camera doesn't stretch across the table and I'm just a nervous Nelly and I just I just I don't crochet that way. I don't loom it that way um, I just I'm just not a good tutorial person um and um, I was going to crochet around this coffee can that I plan on putting my crochet hooks and stuff in. But um, 
the tutorial I found to help me do that, I didn't like it. And I decided not to do it. And then I remembered that uh, my, my lovely uh, subscriber friend, uh, Angela, had sent me, um, hand when she sent me some handmade things, she also sent me a bunch of uh, flower stickers. And so when I was taking a break from being frustrated trying to do a tutorial, um, I sat here and covered the can, the, co the empty plastic coffee can with stickers, with the flower stickers. So this is, it's, it's decorated. <laughs> And this was very, believe it or not, it was very therapeutic to just sit here and cover this plastic can with these beautiful flowered stickers. So, yes, I covered it with these stickers. And so I'll be putting crochet hooks in this little can uh, and put back on my table. So, anyway, um, this is going to be a very rough how-to uh, as far as the loom knitting. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to get real formal um hopefully y'all can grasp uh pick up what i'm throwing down as some folks would say um because i'm not i'm not really great at it this is a 41 peg loom okay this is what they call a i think it's a nifty knitter loom i think it's what because it's it's the one where it doesn't have removable pegs the pegs are built into the loom itself now the ones you get uh from i think hobby lobby used to have some i, I haven't seen them in a long time at hobby lobby i don't know if they still carry knitting looms but the, all, all most knitting looms have what they call a anchor peg and so i'm just going to give y'all a, a bare you know one-on-one -on -one, uh you know knitting looms 101 but this is um, an anchor peg right here. So when you start your project with your, you know, your when you're looming a hat or whatever you're gonna do on a knitting loom, you anchor your yarn, at least for your first row or two, to, to this little peg that holds your yarn on the loom and uh, to help you get started. Now, once you've gotten your project started, you just take it off and poke it in the center and you're good to go. But that's where you start from. Now, all looms come with a, I call it a pick. Some people refer to it as a hook. To me, it looks like a pick because it just has this little sharp looking end to it. It, it, it does hook over, so I can see calling it a hook, but I call it a pick. And of course, you'll need a pair of scissors. These big honking things here, they cut anything. Uh, and then you'll need a, uh, a darning needle for your ends. Um, now with the Hue and Me yarn that I'm using, I, I, it, it, I just go in from the outside of the ball because of course it wouldn't let me have the inside string and I didn't want to yarn barf it all over the place. Um, Cause I, it, it's only a hundred and something yards. So I probably would have just ended up handballing the whole scheme. I've done that before. But this is a five weight yarn. So uh, now typically with um, this large, ga this is considered a large gauge loom. There are, I do have some, some small gauge looms that look more like needle knitted hats when they come off. Uh, they really do look like uh, needle knitted hats. They're, they're that small, but it takes twice as long to do a hat on one of the small gauge looms. It takes a long time. That's why I like my large gauge because I can do a hat in a couple hours. Um, but um, what you want to do is you take your yarn and you do a slip knot. And I don't know about you, but I do my slip knot. I just turn my yarn like this and I reach over and, you know, grab my working yarn and just pull it up like that. And then you put it over your anchor peg like that and you just kind of pull it in like that. Now, um, what I typically will do is I'll take my tail, I'll take the tail and, uh, let me, hold on a second. Let me re lower this down a little bit. Might be a little easier to see what I'm doing if you are lower. There we go. But, uh, I'll typically take my tail and I'll put it between these, put, I'll put it between those two pegs right there. Because when I get a couple of rows in, I'm just going to take my, the end of my pick and I'm going to take that, that uh, knot off. 
and um, just poke it down into the middle there. You'll you'll see as we get going. But um, so you just kind of gonna hold your loom like so, and then you're gonna take your yarn like this, and you're gonna do what's known as an e wrap. So an e wrap is basic. It, the reason why it's called that is because it's it, you're doing it like this, like as if you were making an E. So you're just gonna E wrap all the pegs. You're gonna go around to each peg. Now what I do, because sometimes when you're going around the loom, um, if you don't have a good hold of your yarn, it'll just pop, it'll just bounce right back off the, the, the pegs. Your yarn will just bounce right back off the pegs. So in order to kind of hold, hold the yarn in place i will i will use my left hand and just hold hold the yarn as i go and just kind of just guide it back to the bottom of the peg like so and just do like that as i'm going and you're going to go around all your pegs like this so you're just going to go one and, and all the way around okay and you're just going to hold, you, you're going to not only just hold it with your left hand, but you're going to kind of push it down a little bit because you're going to have to have another row that you're going to come back and knit it off to do to, to your what's cast, what's called a cast on. Just like regular knitters have cast ons uh, when they cast on their needles, you're going to cast on this loom. So we're casting on at this point with an E-wrap cast on, just a very simple one. We're going to keep this pretty simple. Okay. So that's your first row. But we need, but we still have to knit, knit on for our cast on. So we have to go around again. So we're going to keep going until we have two loops on each peg. Okay. So we're going to keep going like this. And we're, hold, we're holding it with our left hand to keep... And we're doing that so that it doesn't just spring back and, and unravel from the, the loom, okay? Because believe me, that can be very frustrating when you're in the middle of a project. It's happened to me so many times, I can't even tell you. So I learned this trick a long time ago to just hold it with my left hand. Just a gentle hold. You don't have to hold it very tightly or anything. Just a gentle, you know, holding the yarn to the loom so that it doesn't spring loose on you because it's very frustrating when that happens. All right, so now you're back to your beginning peg, okay? So this is what you should have. It's gonna look just like that, okay? All right, so now you're gonna take your pick or your hook, whichever you wanna call it, and you're gonna take it. All right, now you're gonna go right here to this one right here. The last one you, you, you you put two loops on, okay? So that when you do that one, then you're free to to knit over all the rest of them without this one coming undone on you. So this one right here, you're just gonna take, let's see if I can show it to you good, okay? You're just gonna take your hook right there under the yarn. Can you see that? You're just gonna take it right under the yarn and you're gonna pull it up over the peg like so and then you only have one loop on the peg okay now we're going to do it again on this one now we don't have to hold it anymore it's, it's good to go it's going to stay all right so now we're going to go to this next one can you see where we're at all right so we're here where we started doing our loops we're going to just pull this up and oh that's okay can you see that see what i did there all right so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna knit off what this is what we call knitting off knit we're gonna knit off all these hook all these all these pegs okay so all we're doing is we're taking our hook in that bottom loop and that bottom loop and then we're taking it over the top of the peg. That's all we're doing, is we're taking that bottom loop and we're take, put, 
pulling it up and over, up and over. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. And I'll show you what we're gonna do in the next, next step here. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a garter stitch brim for this hat. So this is a little bit different because we're gonna be all fancy. So I'm just gonna finish this row here. Because I know y'all have seen how I do. I've been doing hats. I've got my own little style of doing it. I don't do what they call the ribbed brim. I do a garter stitch brim because, well, I think it looks nice. And rib brims are, they've been done a lot. I like the garter stitch brim better. I think it looks more fancy. It's my own thing, I guess. Alrighty, so now you have cast it on your loom. I'll break here. Okay, now that you have cast it on your loom, meaning, you know, you've got a whole row of the knit stitch, okay? Meaning that you had two loops on the loom, now you only have one loop on the loom and your yarn is secure. So that means you no longer need your yarn on this anchor peg. So all you're going to do is take and unhook it here with your hook, pick, pick however you want to call it. Just unhook it. You're just going to unhook it like so and then use the string that we tucked in and just boop, that's it. I'm just going to leave it just like that. You don't even have to mess with it again until you're done and ready to tuck in ends. No more messing with that. All right. So now we need to learn the purl stitch. Okay. And the purl stitch is a bit different. It's, it's a lot different. <laughs> and in order to do a garter stitch uh, brim, we're going to do the purl stitch all the way around this row. We're going to do the purl stitch on every peg. And then the next row, we knit every peg. And then the next row, we purl every peg. And we do that until we have the brim the length that we want it to be. Okay? And so to, to do, let me try to angle myself where y'all can see. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this, this here pick and we're going to put it, oh, let's see if I can we put the, that is really not working. Okay, we put our pick in the you just kind of put slide it under under the yarn like so okay and then you grab the yarn under here and pull it up like this okay I'm gonna show you what that looks like okay that's what you're looking to do you're pulling up a loop un underneath that loop that loop that's already on your peg that's what you're doing okay and then you're gonna grab with your fingers and you're going to pull this this up. I usually do, well, you're going to pull this up. This loop off, pull this, put the new loop on and tighten it down. That is a purl stitch, okay? Then you're going to go to the next one and do the same thing. You're going to scoop up your loop, pull, grab the yarn underneath it, pull that loop up. Pull the old loop off, put the new loop on, and tighten your yarn down. Okay? One more time. Then we're going to scoop it up, pull that new loop up, pull the old loop off the peg, put the new loop on, tighten your yarn. Okay? That is a purl. Okay? One more again. New loop. Pull it up off, new loop on, tighten yarn, okay? And that's what we're going to do all the way around. And I'll meet you right back here at the beginning anchor peg, okay? Okay, so we should have uh, purled all, every, every um, peg all the way around. And now we are back where we started at this peg on this side of the, um, of the anchor peg. So we always want to come back to the left side of the anchor peg, okay? This is the right side of the anchor peg. This is the left side of the anchor peg, okay? So this is where we want to be. 
Now this next row, we're just gonna do an E-wrap knit off, uh, knit knit stitch, which is what we did when we cast it on. So this is, this is the easy part. I'm gonna have to get some more yarn out because I'm having to do from the outside of the skein and because the inside didn't wanna work. So let me pull off some more yarn. And this, let me tell you, this might be beautiful yarn, but the skein is jacked. Okay. So now that I got some yarn pulled off, this should let me e-wrap now. All right, and remember, e-wrap is just because it's in the shape of an E, okay? So you put your hook back down, and we're gonna e-wrap again. So you're gonna start with that peg to the right of your anchor peg, and just wrap, okay? And just wrap and hold it with your left hand and make it a little easier for yourself. And we're just gonna wrap all the way around, all 41 pegs. Oh. Now just as a thing, if you don't have five weight yarn like this, you can use two strands of uh, four weighted yarn. And it don't have to be the same color if you want to make a color extravaganza by using two, you know, a, two different colors and make a nice marled looking hat. You can certainly do that. And now we are back to the peg at the left side of the anchor peg. And that's where we want to be. So we're going to knit that one off first so that that anchors everything, okay? And there we go. We're just knitting off that. And that's what we're gonna do all the way around. We're just gonna take that bottom loop with our hook, our hook or pick, and we're gonna pull it off just like that. And now we're knitting off all the way around. And so we're just doing the knit stitch all the way around the whole loom on this row. And the next one will be another purl round which takes both hands. And so this is all we're doing here. We're just grabbing the bottom loop and pulling it up and over the peg. And this is just your basic knit stitch. Nothing fancy. And this is, we're only doing garter stitch, this one row knit, one row purl, until you've got your brim as long as you want. Once you feel comfortable with the, the length of your brim, then you're just gonna do regular knit stitch the rest of the way until you get your hat as big as you want. And then we will cast off, which is easier than it sounds. All right, so now we are back around to where we started from. So, all right, so now we are going to purl another row. And so here we are with the purl again. So we're gonna take our yarn from, we're gonna take our hook here. We're gonna move the yarn up, scoop it up and like this, pull it up and off, off the peg. Take this, this is, Work. Take that, put the new loop on, and grab your yarn and tighten that on. And that's how you do that purl business. And once you've purled every um, peg all the way around, I'll meet you back here. Okay, so now we have successfully completed row four, which was a purl row. So now we'll do another regular e-wrap uh, row. Now, it's looking, if you look down here, it's looking pretty good. This is, uh, I don't know if you could tell, but yeah, it's definitely already, because it's a five weight yarn, it doesn't take many rows to, to start looking really nice. And But we are on row four of this already, and it's really looking nice. So um, basically, we're gonna do one more row of uh, E-wrap, and then another row of pearl until we get 
this brim where we won't it won't take long uh, because it's five weight yarn it doesn't take long but uh, this will be row number five now uh, I am going to uh, just do one more row of this knit, knit stitch with y'all with y'all and then I'll go off camera to complete the brim and then I'll come back and um, show y'all and, and, and tell y'all that y'all gonna just uh, I'll try to keep track of how many rows I do to complete the rest of the hat so that y'all have some idea of how many rows it might take y'all to um, get a, a regular adult size hat because when I normally make these hats I don't keep up with how many rows I'm doing but since this is a tutorial I will try to keep track but here we go with the e-wrap um, row and so we'll do this and just uh, like we've been doing and just wrap all the pegs and hold that in there we go we'll want to show you this one more time and then I'll leave y'all to uh, complete the brim and then we'll get back and do the body because the body is pretty pretty mindless you just do this e-wrapping uh, stuff um, oh goodness now I need more yarn There we go. I knew I could do it. <laughs> okay. I knew there was a way to get it to come loose. Alrighty. I normally go faster than this, so y'all just have to forgive me. I'm not used to going slow. Alright. Now we're going to just knit over that. And here we are with two loops, and we're going to just knit, hook the bottom loop over the top loop on all our pegs for our knit stitch. So we just do that up and over, up and over, all the way around. And I usually pick up some speed. Probably make some of y'all's head hurt how fast I go with some of this. And you can really go pretty fast with this thick yarn and have a hat done in no time at all. And I'm sure y'all probably thinking, wow, by now I could have had it crocheted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably so. I like both crocheted and knitted hats. I think both of them have their place in our world. I just can't crochet one for some reason. We all have our limitations. And I usually hold this, this loom close to my body and do it. I'm not used to holding it away from myself to show anybody what I'm doing. Here we are, back to the beginning. Alrighty. So now I'm going to go off camera and do the rest of my brim. You see how that's looking? So I only need just a few more rows. So this was row, I think this is five. It's five, row, five, row five with it. And um, I only need a few more rows. And then I'll have enough big enough brim to, to be happy with. And then I'll just uh, e-wrap knit the rest of the body of my hat. But um, when I come back, I'll be done with the brim and then we'll get further instruction, okay? Okay, so welcome back. Uh, so now that I've worked eight rows uh, total with the, um, the uh, including the cast on, cast on rows, and then, um, so it took eight rows to get us our brim, including, you know, when we started the, with the two, with the two rows that it took us to get the cast on and then uh it, which we really don't count that the the cast on row as being um two rows we're just that's just one so um it took us eight rows worked to get our brim so this is what we got this is what we got and then in addition to those eight rows i worked two more with the e-wrap so that you could start to see i don't know if you can see that yet you could start to see 
what the rest of the hat's gonna look like, okay? Now, keep in mind, your stitches are gonna look a little stretched on the loom, but when you take it off, everything's gonna condense down and it's all gonna come together and look really nice. So, if you're, if you, when you're working it, if it looks a little strange to you on the loom, don't worry about that because once you take it off this, it's not gonna be this big. It's gonna, it's gonna shrink, it's gonna, you know, retract a little bit and where it actually works. Uh, so don't worry, don't worry if your stitches look a little stretched. It's gonna, it's supposed to look like that. So don't worry about that part. But you'll start to see, you know, you'll see that what looks like, it looks like hair, braided hair. When, when you get, you know, when you start to work the knit stitch, um, at, you know, just the E-wrap, just doing the E-wrap rows after, after the garter stitch, you're no longer purling every other row. You're just doing the E-wrap stitch, stitches. So you're done with the brim and see how pretty that turned out. That's your garter stitch where every, you know, one, one row E-wrap, um, knit and one row purl. That's, that's what gives you this beautiful garter stitch look right here. Okay. And so the rest of your hat is just going to be the E-wrap knit stitch. That's it. So I'm going to work off camera and get, and you're, and you're going to work as many rows as you need to do according to the yarn you're using. Now I will count how many rows I need to work, uh, for this five, five weight yarn. Now, so far I've worked two, so, uh, two, two more additional rows to the eight that it took me to get my brim. So, um, I will count how many rows it takes to get to an adult size hat. Just not a, a beanie size, not a slouchy size. If you're going slouch, if you're wanting slouchy, of course, you're going to work, work more rows. Now, I, this is just a regular beanie hat here that, uh, my buddy Ser Serena made me for Christmas. Uh, she lives in Canada and she sent me this beautiful hat along with some other things for Christmas. But, um, beanie hats, uh, you know, are not, you don't work as many rows for beanies as you would, uh, for a slouchy hat. So that goes, that should go without saying, but it's a tutorial. So I'm going to throw that in there. But, um, as you can see, the brim looks really nice. And, uh, this, you know, is, is a different style hat. It has a different look to it than a ribbed, uh, brim. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and work as long as it, it needs to be to fit my head and I'll leave y'all to work um, the rest of it and I'll come back and show you how to cast off and cinch up the uh, the top of the hat okay okay welcome back uh, so now you've worked as many rounds as um, you needed to make your hat as big as you needed now in order to test to see if your hat is big is it, it see if you've worked is enough rounds uh, for your head um, and I know this may seem odd, but what you can do, um, and I'll, and I'll demonstrate is you can take and put this just like this over and, and put it far as far as you, how, however you wear your hats, you can do just like this and put it over, over your head, just like this. And I know this is odd, but this, this is how I usually test to see if the hat's big enough. And then, and when you cinch it up. It will work okay and just hold it over your head like this and then you'll know that your hat's big enough okay now I've made enough of these that I know based on how much I have hanging down here yeah let's not even talk about my hair at this point but I, I can I know you know because I know how big my hand is and based on the fact that I've been doing this about four years how, how much I need to be hanging down at this point so I know that this is enough hanging down to make a nice hat okay to, to make it fit my head and I have a reasonably big head <laughs> it used to be bigger when I weighed 103 pounds more but <laughs> it's a little smaller than it used to be I'll put it that way anyhow so at this point what you're going to do in order to bind off we're going to take our yarn and we're going to wrap in order to make sure that we have enough to bind off. This is how, this is what you do. You take your yarn and you hold it around and you go around your loom just like this. And you do it about one and a half turns. Okay. 
once you get one and a half, this is where your scissors come in handy, and you clip your yarn just like so, okay? And then you take your hook, pick, which, however, whatever lingo you want to use, and take your yarn, and you take and you see if y'all can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to take the yarn, just like when we purled earlier, but we're going to take the yarn and scoop it all, and we're going to take it all the way, and we're going to pull it all the way through, okay? This time, we're going to take it all the way through all the way through and we're going to do it all, through each loop just like that and so we're going to lay it across there like that we're going to take it and scoop it under each loop and pull it all the way through each loop okay we're going to go all the way around and do it just like that so i'm going to do this with y'all so you can see what i'm doing here and i'm going to all the way through I'm going to try to hold it up so I can show y'all. And I lost track of how many rows I did. I got to about row 15 and then I just lost track because I was listening to music. Please forgive me. But we're going to go all the way around here. Now this might tighten up a little bit as you go. That's okay if, if you need to, you know. It might take a little finagling. Just depending on how tight when you were doing your e wraps, how tight you went, you went. Because some folks, if you're a tight crocheter, you might be a tight loom knitter too. I'm I'm a loose crocheter, so I'm a I'm just I don't have a lot of hand strength, so that's why I I tend to do things a little looser than some other people. So a lot of my stuff is drapey. <laughs> Okay, I split my yarn a little bit there, but that is okay. I didn't hurt anything. And and if you need to reach in and grab it with your fingers, that is okay. It's okay to use your fingers. If you want to scoop the yarn up like that like that, and then reach around and just pull it with your fingers, you can. It, it tends to help the yarn not split if you just pull it so far with your hook and then reach in and grab it with your fingers. Then that helps your yarn not split. Just do it so, you know, do it to a certain a point and then do, finish it with your fingers. That works, that works too. And I know this is a lot of pegs to have to do each individual one. But this is how we have to do it to get it off of here. And yes, I do this a lot quicker when I'm not doing it in front of anybody. Cause I'm doing it close to my body when I'm not trying to do it on a camera. Now see this process, a lot of yarns, a lot, um, will actually, um, frizz. I call it frizz, but they'll get real fuzzy through this process. Uh, and by the time you get done, the, the, this, this little part right here will be real frayed because of how many times it's gone through the loops. But that's okay. You'll, you'll, you can still work with it. There's not an easier way. Trust me, if there was, I would I would find it. <laughs> because I prefer easier ways. If there are such a thing. But this yarn is wonderful to work with, I'm telling you. This this hue and me yarn, 
I like it. It's really nice. I hope they're not discontinuing it. You know how that is. You, you take a long time to warm up to a particular yarn, and next thing you know, oh, they're discontinuing that. getting close to the end here all right and you are indeed going to go back through the first one you you started with so this is this is the first one that I looped through and I'm going to go right back through that one and now the fun part we're going to pull them off now that we've now that we've um, put the the yarn through each uh, loop we're just going to reach in with our hook and pop each loop off the loom okay you're just going to reach in and hook it all hook, hook it like this and pull it right off so you are binding off so just reach in and pull every one off I know this is the nervous part. Now you got to wonder, did you do everything right? Is it is it going to come out all right? Yeah, it'll be fine. It's not hard. Loom knitting is fun. It's relaxing. One of the easiest things I've ever done. Learned how to do. It really dug me out of a black hole. It gave me something. It was gateway to my crochet. And we're almost there to the end. Here we go. Last couple. Boom, boom, ba boom. There we are. All right. Off your loom. And this is what you have here. All right. So now what you do is you just pull this. And then it'll be like a drawstring. So now you take... You take this and you put it in here and you turn it inside out, okay? Inside out, like so. Doesn't look like much just yet, but it will. So you pull this tight, okay? <sighs> My nose just keeps running. <sighs> take your darning needle. Remember, you need that, all right? Yarn needle, darning needle, whatever you want to call it. Now you have this big long string. You don't need all that. You know you got that frayed in too. Because it gets a little frayed. You don't need all of this. You just need about half of it maybe. So cut that part off. Yeah, it went on the floor. It'll be alright. I'll pick it up here shortly. Now you got this part. That's all you need. Put it through here. Hopefully. Through there. Alrighty. Alright. Do you see what you got here? We got to close this little hole up here. Now, I don't do pom-poms. If you want to do a pom-pom, that's on you. That's fine. Okay? So, we're going to... You see these little... Th this little circle here? What you're going to do is you're just going to run your needle through through these little this little uh train here you're just going to run it up through here and seal it off okay just like you would if you were um tucking in your ends normally so you just uh pull your needle through you put your put it in through here and cinch, cinch it off some more And I get it as far as it'll go, and then I pull it through, and then I take it a little further. Because sometimes you have to get it so far and then move around and put it, put it in the rest of the way. And I'm not perfect here, and I don't expect y'all to be perfect. I don't ever do a perfect job on anything.
So I wait until I get it as close to being back to the beginning as I can. There we go. I think that's pretty close. And then I cinch it up some more. There we go. And that's got it closed. See there? I got it good and closed. I got it closed. And then I'll take it and run my needle right across the middle and run it under the yarn and make myself a knot or two, you know, just to kind of get it good and secure. Then I'll kind of crisscross this over there and make myself a knot. Just make myself a knot. And if you see me looking for something, I'm, yep, there it is. Now, I don't know how y'all feel about this, but this stuff is my friend. This is uh, Aline's Fabric Fusion Permanent Fabric Adhesive. This stuff is, you just don't need but a drop. That's it. It's fabric glue. It dries clear. You don't even know you have it on there. And I use it on hats. Uh, because, well, you don't have to worry about it coming loose. But, uh... It's very thick, and you only need a little, tiny little drop. And so I just stick a little drop on my knot. And I rub it in, and you never know it was there. You don't have to worry about your hat coming loose. Done. All right. Oh, and I know what you're thinking. Amanda, what about the little tag down here? We're going to take care of that. All right. We're going to undo that. And then you just take it and loop it through right here. And then you're going to tuck it in like you would anything else. And I know I just threw that in there. Put it back through your yarn needle. get it through there there we go told you it wasn't perfect <laughs> far from perfect so and you just do it do it like you would any other end tucking you just sew it up through there make it look as neat as you can it's a hat so it's going on your head it's not like it's going on bare skin or anything so it doesn't have to be terribly perfect And I just probably make a little knot here, too. There we go. And that's all I'm going to do for this. Because this is probably going to be worn by me. <laughs> probably. Just a tiniest little... There we go. It's a hat, for Pete's sake. Not a sweater. All right. Let's see there. You can't even tell I did anything. Boom. All right. So this is what we got on the top. That right, looks all right, don't it? And see, when all's said and done, and here's your hat. No seams to worry about. And fits just right. Well, I think this is probably a longer tutorial than I meant, but I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope this is what y'all are looking for. Uh, thank you for watching if you're still watching. And uh, remember that I love you and so does Jesus. And please adopt, don't shop. Your best friend's waiting on you at the shelter or the rescue. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye now.